How free is China's media to answer this and to figure out what exactly the word freedom means in this context? I believe the place to start is by looking at the nature of the country's political system, because this provides context for why the PRC restricts its media. We all know China censors its internal flow of information, but to what end does it do this? What kind of social system is it trying to protect by limiting which information information its citizens are exposed to? Upon seeing the ways China's electoral system is more widely participated in, harder to corrupt, and better at popular representation than that of the USA, it's apparent that this system is not one of an elite hoarding power and knowledge. The people do have ways to hold the system accountable, more ways than Americans do over our system. Given these comparatively superior qualities that Chinese democracy has, when contrasted with what's considered the free world. Why do the studies we tend to see of China's press freedom say something so contradictory to that? Why does Reporters Without Borders put the PRC near, near the bottom of its list? To explain this contrast between how well China's political system accommodates its people and how anti-democratic uh, outside observers tend to view China's governing model as, I, I, I looked into the nature of the ideas the PRC uses its media to promote as these are the ideas that the government evidently cares about safeguarding from being challenged too much. The country's main media outlets are Xinhua, Global Times, CGTN, China Daily, and the South China Morning Post. This list provides a guide on how to, con how to discern which ideas the government seeks to protect, because one of these outlets is not like the other. SCMP is owned by the Alibaba Group, a company that's not based in mainland China but in Hong Kong. And Hong Kong, like Taiwan, has a capitalist class that doesn't want the Communist Party to threaten its status. This is reflected in the kinds of ideas that the SCMP puts forth in contrast to the country's other media, uh, other biggest media outlets. Whereas the SCMP is willing to at least entertain the accusations that the U.S. State Department puts forth against the party, outlets like Xinhua don't have this neutral tone, but rather actively challenge these assertions. This indicates that the essence of the aim of China's informational control project is to combat, combat the ideas which the country's adversaries use against the party. This is a type of media situation that countries only have to uh, uh, find themselves in when they hold a particular type of relationship with the United States. Because Russia, for instance, is also considered a U.S. adversary, its government also seeks to stop uh, media within the country from prom uh, promoting the ideas that Washington wants Russia's people to be exposed to. The most obvi obvious example of this is RT, the Russian state-run media outlet whose job is to present a view of current affairs that favors the foreign policy agenda of the Kremlin. By extension, its job is to also combat the narratives that Washington puts forth. This is why RT and CGTN have both taken on a role as popular sources for anti-imperialist content, content, frequently platforming commentary on the dis destructive consequences of U.S. foreign policy. The most scientifically substantial source of criticism of China's media landscape that I've been able to find comes from the Ad Fontes media reliability and bias rating. This metric's judgment places the South China Morning Post in the category of especially biased news sources, with the negative uh, 3.50 rating being on the far end of bias. This bias exists as a symptom of the political struggle between Hong Kong's elites and the Communist Party of China as SCMP is based in Hong Kong and therefore is inclined to put out content which challenges the party's authority. The outcome is that when a media rating service like Ad Fontes applies its met methodology to SCMP, it finds a quite biased publication, which helps answer how free China's media is, because the ruling party hasn't banned SCMP despite how much SCMP evidently dislikes the ruling party. The same type of criticism can, of course, apply to the media outlets that exist to assist the Communist Party, as they're heavily biased as well, except in the opposite direction. Yet, for the vast majority of Chinese people, this isn't a criticism, but a point in the favor of these outlets. It's not possible for any media 
outlet to be truly neutral, every piece of news media content has some type of ideological nature. And if the ideology that China's dominant media paradigm reinforces is one which helps ensure the Communist Party stays in power, the majority of Chinese people have strong material incentives to see this as a good thing. The party cultivates an effective electoral system, and its policies are responsible for eliminating the worst of China's past poverty, while taking China years ahead of its Paris Climate Pledges. China's political culture is one where, where most are satisfied with their government, uh, where they're not too often inclined to object when they see pro-government content within the media. With the recent uh, developments surrounding China's foreign relations and domestic affairs, namely the escalations with the U.S. over Taiwan and the American attacks against TikTok, the country's relationship to its own media is set to become even more one where the media, uh, where the people look to domestic media for national self-affirmation. At the same time that China's adversaries are portraying it in an extremely negative light, its government is, show, is showing itself to be willing to comply with the demands of protesters, having lifted the controversial zero-COVID po policy last year. This ensures a crisis of governmental le uh, legitimacy won't emerge for the foreseeable future, so the Chinese media's practice of acting as a means for defending the ruling party uh, could be increasingly seen by the public as positive, even more than this is now.